Matlock was one of the great legal thrillers of its time. Today it's considered a classic and is one of Andy Griffith's best known works. Whether you're a new fan of the show or a diehard fan who's seen every episode, you're no doubt impressed with the show's incredible writing, directing, and acting. But even the biggest fans of Matlock may have missed out on some fascinating details that made the show a success. Let's look back at some of the fascinating details you never noticed on Matlock. Ben Matlock or Andy Taylor Andy Griffith had two famous roles on television. One was Sheriff Andy Taylor on The Andy Griffith Show, and one was Attorney Ben Matlock. We'll let you decide which role you prefer. But did Andy spend more time acting as Andy Taylor or as Ben Matlock? Overall, there were more episodes of The Andy Griffith Show. However, as Matlock episodes were usually an hour or longer, Andy spent more time playing Ben Matlock. Before we tell you more about the details you never noticed in Matlock, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. See you in court, or is it church? One of the most common locations in Matlock was the Fulton County Courthouse. While you might have been fooled thinking this was an actual courthouse, it was actually the Second Church of Christ Scientist. It was located in Los Angeles and is now considered one of the city's most famous historic places. It's a beautiful church located in West Adams, near the USC campus. It was added to LA's Register of Historic Places following the first season of Matlock and remains a popular point of visit for fans of the show. It's notable also that though Matlock mostly took place in Georgia, it was shot primarily in Los Angeles. The theme song. You can't have a popular American TV series without a great theme song. The tune for Matlock was composed by Dick DeBenedictus, but do you know some of his other great compositions? He composed some great theme songs for some of America's most popular series. He composed the themes for Perry Mason, Columbo, Police Story, Father Dowling Mysteries, Hawaii Five-O, and The Rockford Files. One of his final compositions was for the mystery series Diagnosis Murder. He won three ASCAP awards at the ASCAP Film and Television Awards in 1992, 93, and 97. He won two awards for the Most Performed Theme and one for Most Performed Underscore. The Success of Matlock Today we look back at Matlock as a classic show, but how was it considered during its initial run? Matlock had the good fortune of being shown on two of the most popular networks. Its first season in 1986 began on NBC. The remaining seasons were shown on ABC, which was just as popular. Its highest rank on the Nielsen ratings was number 14. While it never reached the top 10, it was lauded as one of the most successful shows of its time. It's still remembered as a classic legal thriller that holds up today. Dean Hargrove was also nominated for an Edgar Allan Poe Award for writing the episode Diary of a Perfect Murder. It never won an Emmy or Golden Globe for being a great show, but this didn't stop it from winning critical acclaim and being adored by audiences all over. Who is Ben Matlock? Did you know Ben Matlock was based on a real person? While it's not 100% confirmed, it's believed that Ben Matlock was based on noted Georgia lawyer Bobby Lee Cook. Cook was lauded for his legal skills as well as his southern charm, which is also what made Ben Matlock such an endearing character. One of Bobby Lee Cook's most notable cases was when he defended Bobby Hoppy. Bobby Hoppy was a running back on the Auburn football team and played with the team when they won the championship in 1957. 31 years later, Bobby was brought to trial for the murder of a bootlegger. The jury couldn't come up with a decision on the case. Matlock was made for Andy Griffith after the Andy Griffith Show and its reunion shows, Andy Griffith continued to have a steady career. But there wasn't a role that could match up to his role as Sheriff Andy Taylor. He played an attorney in two TV series, Fatal Vision and Street Killing. These were moderate successes, but couldn't match the fame of the Andy Griffith Show. There was still a huge demand to see Andy Griffith on TV, but the right character had yet to appear. NBC President Brandon Tartikoff felt Andy Griffith could play a great attorney. Tartikoff hired Dean Hargrove to create this new character. Hargrove had become successful creating the character Perry Mason. Mason was a popular criminal defense attorney, which made Dean Hargrove the perfect writer for creating a character for Andy Griffith. Ben Matlock was born, and this was the role that marked Andy's TV comeback. It should also be mentioned that Andy absolutely loved playing the role. He spent a lot of time rehearsing his lines and would make notes to remember his complex lines and long speeches. 
There were several occasions when the cast and crew would give him a standing ovation for his acting. No doubt there were people at home doing the same. Andy Griffith also had a role in shaping the character and the direction of the show. He wanted the character to have moral ambiguity to challenge the viewers. With The Andy Griffith Show, he played a character who represented the idyllic American life of the 50s and 60s. But with Matlock, he wanted to challenge audiences and get them to think for themselves. I want you to meet an old friend of mine. One of the most popular TV tropes of all time is known as I want you to meet an old friend of mine. With this trope, you see a familiar cast of actors and actresses who you've seen on other TV series. On Matlock, we saw many cast members from The Andy Griffith Show appear with Andy Griffith once again. On The Andy Griffith Show, Don Knotts played Barney Fife. On Matlock, he played Les Calhoun. There were other cameo appearances by other actors who had originally appeared on The Andy Griffith Show. These included Betty Lynn, Jack Dodson, Arlene Galanka, and Annetta Carso. The Spinoffs Few fans know about the two spinoffs created as a result of Matlock's success. In a 1986 episode, we were introduced to the characters Joe Penny and William Conrad. They were given a spin-off crime series called Jake and the Fat Man. In one episode, the Fat Man visits a doctor who seems to have a keen interest in solving mysteries. That doctor was Dr. Mark Sloan, played by Dick Van Dyke. This character was so popular he was given his own show, Diagnosis Murder, which also helped introduce Dick Van Dyke to a new generation of fans and became his most famous role following his role on The Dick Van Dyke Show. Like Andy Griffith, he was another veteran actor, becoming famous once again at a later age. It still holds up. While some fans may still adore the show and others may have grown out of it, the verdict is clear. Matlock still holds up for a large audience. In 2013, a year after Andy Griffith's death, a two-hour Matlock episode was aired in place of some of NBC's most popular shows. This 21-year-old episode garnered more views than the contemporary shows, only falling behind that day's episode of Law & Order. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have a favorite episode of Matlock? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.